Welcome to a presentation on arc length. If f of x is continuous and differentiable on the closed interval from a to b, then the arc length is equal to the definite integral from a to b of the square root of one plus f prime of x squared integrated with respect to x. One thing we have to be careful about when we apply this formula is that this is the derivative of the function. A common error is just to sub in the original function, and of course that would not be correct. And we can find the arc length in a similar way if we have the function in the form of x equals g of y. And of course, if we integrate with respects to y, our limits of integration will be with respects to y. Let's take a look at the idea behind where this formula comes from. If we wanted to determine the arc length of this black function on the interval from zero to three, we could start with a single segment, and the length of this segment would be an approximation of the actual arc length. However, as we increase the number of segments used, as we see here, you can quickly see that as the number of segments increase, it becomes a better approximation, and as the number of segments approaches infinity, the length of those segments will approach the actual arc length. So using this idea of segments to approximate the arc length, we can get a better understanding of where the formula comes from. And it's really based on the Pythagorean theorem. So if we want to determine the arc length of this blue function on the interval from one to two, we could use this red segment as an approximation. If we take this segment and form a right triangle, this length here would be delta y, and this length here would be delta x. And we'll let the hypotenuse equal delta s. So using the Pythagorean theorem, we can state that delta s squared must equal delta x squared plus delta y squared. And if we solve this for delta s, we'd have delta s equals the principal square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared. And then what we're gonna do is multiply the right side of the equation by delta x over delta x. Next, we're gonna take this delta x in the denominator and move it into the square root. Remember, when we do that, it would become delta x squared. Now we'll simplify this fraction here. So this would give us the length of this single segment in red, but as we saw in the animation, we want to sum more and more of these segments. And as we do that, it will approach the actual arc length from one to two. So now we'll change the notation slightly to denote that we're gonna be using more and more segments to determine this arc length. Now on the left, we'll have the sum of the segments from i equals one to n, and it must equal the sum of the right side of the equation as well. Now you probably know where we're going with this. If we let the number of segments approach infinity, on the left side, we would have just the arc length, and on the right side, we'd actually have the formula for arc length. It's gonna be the definite integral on the interval from a to b, or in this case, it's from one to two, of the square root of one plus, this would be the derivative squared. Integrating with respects to x. So hopefully this gives you a little bit better understanding of where this formula comes from. The main thing here is that we're using the Pythagorean theorem to derive this formula as the number of segments used to approximate the arc length approaches infinity. Let's go and take a look at an example. Here we want to determine the arc length of this function on the given interval. So here's the graph of the function, and if the interval is from zero to four, we're trying to find the arc length from here to here. So the first step is to find the derivative of the given function. So the derivative would be equal to one-third times three-halves, x to the three-halves minus one. Well, this is gonna be one-half x to the one-half. But remember, for the formula, we do have to square this derivative, so let's go ahead and do that. Well, if we square one-half, we'll have one-fourth. If we square x to the one-half, we'll just have x. So let's see if we can find this arc length now. The arc length will equal the definite integral from zero to four. Now, because I know we're gonna have to integrate, let's rewrite this in rational exponent form. So instead of the square root, we'll write it to the one-half power. And one plus the derivative squared is equal to 
1 plus 1 fourth x. Now this will require u substitution where u will be equal to 1 plus 1 fourth x, which means that du will equal 1 fourth dx. Looking at the integral, we're looking for a substitution for dx. So let's go ahead and solve this for dx by multiplying both sides by four. We have four du equals dx. Let's rewrite this in terms of u. We would have u to the one half, and then dx is equal to four du. So we have four out here and du here. Well, this will be equal to four times u to the three halves divided by three halves. So let's go ahead and clean this up and rewrite it in terms of x. So we have the arc length would be equal to four times two thirds u to the three halves and u is one plus one fourth x. We need to evaluate this at the upper and lower limits. So we'd have eight thirds We'll first replace x with four. So it looks like we have one plus, one fourth times four would be one. So we'll have one plus one to the three halves power. And when x is zero, we'll have one plus zero to the three halves power. So we have eight thirds times two to the three halves minus, well one to the three halves is just one. So this would be the arc length of this function on the interval from zero to four. And as a decimal, it's approximately equal to 4.876. Okay, that's all we're gonna have time for on this video. We'll go ahead and take a look at one more example in part two. Thank you for watching.